Just behind me here is Amal Berger, or at least that's what the locals call her. In actual fact, nobody has the faintest idea who she is, or what she's doing here, or even how she got here. And she's not the only one. Welcome to Hamelburg. Hamelburg is a small market town in the foothills of the Rhön uplands and was first mentioned in the 8th century. The town hall was built after the original was destroyed in a fire in 1854 and was renovated in 2019. And I really hope they get around to renovating the 16th century market fountain next. I'm fairly certain that these metal struts were not part of the original design, although photos taken as early as 1900 show that they have been there for a very long time. Apart from that, Hamelburg has some remains of its medieval defences, a palace that served as a summer residence for the abbots of Fulda, because nothing demonstrates your commitment to Christian values of charity more clearly than living like a king, and on the other side of the valley a castle that also belonged to the abbots because obviously they needed a spare. This, by the way, is why the coat of arms of Hamelburg looks very similar to that of Fulda. We're in a wine-producing part of Lower Franconia, which is going to become very obvious in a minute and is a lot nicer than the other thing Hamelburg is famous for, which is as the setting for a particularly disastrous American military operation near the end of the Second World War. But that's not what this video is about. We're off to see what has to be Germany's most mysterious works of art. It's about an hour's walk in the hills to get there, but it's not a difficult climb. We start by finding our way to the hospital, and right here is where the trail starts. From here it's a two-kilometre walk through the vineyards overlooking the valley of the Franconian Zala, and following the route marked with the number 9 and the red arrowhead. And to be honest, even if you don't find Amelberger and her friends, it is well worth it just for these views. This is the southern Rhön, which is where the Rhön proper meets the southwest German Scarplands. The landscape drops sharply from about 350 metres to just 180, and the steep south-facing slopes are covered in vineyards. But eventually you end up here, and if you go down these steps, there's a surprise waiting for you. This is what we came here for, the first of the mysterious stone statues of Hamelburg. Say hello to the philosopher. He just suddenly appeared one day in 2001, the second statue to materialise out of thin air. Locals wondered if he was supposed to represent Goethe, but whoever he is, he's picked a lovely spot. Sadly, he was vandalised the following year and repaired by the town council, and once again he appears to have been damaged. But the thing is, not only does nobody know who he actually is, nobody knows anything about him at all. Why is his chair decorated with lions? Why does he have a snake? And another thing, it's estimated that this sculpture weighs about 600 kilos. So how did he even get here? And it's an excellent question, because how on earth can you get a half-ton block of concrete up here without anybody noticing and without leaving any traces? And somehow this is exactly what they did, and nobody knows how. Nobody noticed any helicopters, you can't get a crane up here, and even a simple ordinary transit van couldn't really get through here as far as anybody can tell. Even I'm having difficulty, so perhaps I should stop filming myself right now. A little further along the path, stop when you get to this railing and you should be able to see the next mystery, known as the Dancer with Child. And I'm going to be honest here, I was hoping I could get closer than this, but I decided that I really didn't want to risk it, and I strongly suggest that you don't either. 
The young woman appeared first in 2002, just as mysteriously and silently as the philosopher, leaving people to speculate on why she was holding her arms like that. The consensus was that she must be dancing. The child appeared the following year. Is it her son? Her younger brother? Who knows? Also, the child is the only one of all the statues looking in the direction of the spectators. The dancer is facing away from the valley, but is also averting her gaze from us. Tiny little details like that have generated a lot of speculation. These statues are quite literally the talk of the town. Finally, we come to the most famous statue and the easiest to spot. She stands on a viewpoint known as the pulpit. She was named Amalberga after a 6th century noblewoman, niece of the Gothic king Theodorich the Great and wife of King Haminafried of Thuringia. According to legend, she owned a castle near here. This statue, though, is a replacement. The original Amalberga was the first of the statues to appear, popping into existence in the year 2000, and looked quite different. But she vanished just as mysteriously in 2013, and five years later, the new Amalberga was discovered. But what is she doing here? Is she giving a speech? Or even preaching? After all, she is standing on the pulpit, so could that be a Bible she's reading from? And who is she addressing? Does this have something to do with the Fugstadt Earth Station enabling satellite communication for TV and internet, and one of the biggest in the world? So far, these questions have remained unanswered. So, who made these statues, and who put them here? Nobody knows. So far, attempts to identify and contact the artists responsible have completely failed. There is a theory that the mayor of Hamelburg at the time knew exactly who they were, and even paid them to do it as some kind of a PR stunt. But if that's the case, then he took that secret with him to his grave. And indeed, these statues did actually win a prize at one point, but because nobody knew, or nobody wanted to admit that they knew, who the artists were, the mayor gave the prize money to a local library. So it seems that we will never know exactly who is responsible for this, and how the mysterious statues of Hamelburg came to be. Hamelburg is reachable by rail from Frankfurt, Fulda and Würzburg. You need to take a regional train to Gmünden and from there any train bound for Bad Kissingen and Schweinfurt. Unfortunately, these statues are not remotely wheelchair accessible, but the area does have many other, more accessible options. And to help you out, here are the exact coordinates of the statues which I've also put in the video description. And it's an excellent world. How on earth can you get a half ton stone of uh, blur? That is somehow what they did. And nobody knows how. There's. Uh, welcome to Hammersburg. Hammersburg. Hammersburg.